Wow, that is a really <clears throat> old picture. Uh, I don't know if I like it. It's pretty good. Your hair is shorter. Now your, your, your hair is grayer. Is, no, it's, there's a monument on your head. It's wow. massive. This is, yeah, it's yeah, nice. You are. Well, we all know James. Uh, I think at least most of us know James. Uh, but let's get to know James a little bit better. Oh boy. Uh, we want to know what's going on in, in your head. That's uh, scary, Ty. You don't want to know what's going on in yeah, my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides all the hair that's in there coming out. So, yeah, I would pay monthly payments to have your hair. I don't know why you're what? self-conscious about it. Yeah, that's great hair. That's great hair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the alternative is this. So you're... you're <laughs> Well, you got the looks, yeah, yeah. I guess so I got the hair. I, I'm just happy to know you, James. James and I have a history, um, and uh, this thing just fell off. James and I have a history. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember our first encounter, um, but... but or, Do you remember it? Yeah. Can you tell it to me? Well, no, we're interviewing you, oh. not me. Um, but uh, sorry that I'm struggling to... Get this thing not to fall off. Okay, so James, yeah. um, dude, who are you? I'm just trying to figure what, that what's out. What's going on? Why, why, okay, this is what I want to know, and this is what I think everybody here probably wants to know. Um, so you're in ministry right now. You and I have had the privilege of working together for a number of years. For a while, you, um, you did an internship with Lightbearers, the ministry that I'm involved with, and that was a blessing to have you. And then you, Huge blessing to me. Yeah, and you uh, have now been for how long doing Bible work with Storyline? Do you know about how long? Uh, I would say three years. Three years. But I've been yeah. helping out with Storyline for about six, seven? Yeah, yeah. Ever you, since Arise in 2016. Yeah, yeah, you've been involved for a long time. So, so what drew you to ministry? <laughs> like if you had to articulate that, wh why do... Uh, what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Why not do something else? No, why not sure. make pizzas at Mod Pizza like you mentioned yesterday Sounds when we good. were visiting? Um, so, no, in 2015, I was busy throwing my life away in Portland uh, in a, just in a really dark place, probably my personal rock bottom. Hmm. And I was there from 2015 to 2016. And then in 2016, I think some of you know the story, my buddy called me and said, you need to get out of this and I have an answer for you. You should go to Arise. And what was this? Get out of this. What is this? Uh, an Portland? unhealthy relationship. An unhealthy relationship. Yeah. 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 So, I remember that. So he's like, you need to get out of this. You should go to a rise and allow your world to just start over. Yeah. And so I went to that a rise. That was good advice. It was great advice. Yeah. Briefly, for those who don't know, just in a sentence or two, what is a rise? You went to a, a rise. rise. What does that mean? It is a discipleship program headed by this guy currently attached to light bearers, right? So it's yeah. a three month discipleship program where you basically live together with other people and you learn about the good. You have your own bed love. and everything. Oh, and, yeah. And, and you, you, you. I don't, you, I'm you, not sharing no bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's. I mean, I'm small enough, I probably could. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're not, we're not stacking, we're not living no, no. together. You treat, okay. you treat us well. Yeah, yeah. It's like a commune, but it's not a cult. It's like Acts chapter one. Yeah. Right? And two. Yeah, yeah. No marijuana. No. No? No. Okay, so, so you came to Arise. By the way, can I just make a parenthetical statement for those of you who don't know? Arise runs um, as a physical on-site program in mm -hmm. Australia right now. I just came back from there just, I don't know, two weeks ago, I guess. We have 46 students there right now. We take about between 40 and 50 students each year. They come from around the world. And, um, and they're there for three and a half months in Australia. Uh, they're at the Gold Coast. Beautiful. And we're hosted by uh, the Kingscliff Church over there. And uh, they have a large property with a building. And we run the classes in that building. And we basically just move through the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation, in a curriculum called The Story. Uh, it's, it's what we call narrative theology. And so we move through the whole Bible with the, most of them are young adults, like you were when, when, yeah, when you like came. Like you were when you, you yeah. <laughs> most, of them are, most of them are young adults. And so right now our youngest student is 18. And um, our oldest student, I think, is 32. And, and there's only one that's, that's, that's in the 30s. And so I just came back from there. It's a wonderful class. Um, we, we, we are, I'm going back in, I don't know, two or three weeks 
to teach the, the last part of, of the program there, that, to teach through the whole program book of Revelation. That program is literally life transformative. Yeah, so you were impacted saying. by it, obviously, yeah. and um, we became friends through, through that encounter, basically, the, you know, the teacher-student relationship, but that quickly uh, went into colleagues in ministry, and we've been doing ministry together. Uh, can you just articulate, that was a parenthetical statement about Arise, what it is, in case you have you know, somebody, maybe it's yourself, who just want to check out of life for three and a half months, go to Australia, learn how it's to surf, and, and go through the whole Bible. Okay, so, um, oh, one more thing. I think I mentioned this. We're launching in August mm -hmm. the same program in Finland. So if you don't like, you know, the warmer climate of, like, Australia, if you want to go to Finland, we're launching the program on a beautiful piece of property in Finland in August, and uh, you can sign up for it now. Registration is open. Who doesn't like the warm? Climate. Who doesn't like the one? Yeah. I would rather be in cooler climates. I, really? Is that weird? I don't know. Oh. Yeah. You're good. I, 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 don't, I don't like humidity and, and that kind of thing. Oh. But, 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 but James, what drew you to ministry? Why, why didn't you just go through the Arise program and then go pursue physical therapy like you were planning to do? Well, that was the plan, and I still tried to, but I didn't get in. Oh. Yeah, so I applied to 10 different schools. So I went to U of O, got my degree in human physiology, minor in Spanish, and then okay. I threw my life away for a couple of years, came back All in right. 2016, went to Arise, yeah. and then you guys asked me to stay on as an intern. Yeah. Internship stays for maybe, or interns stay for like a year, and then after okay. that, it's like, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So I actually did, through the internship, apply to um, two, well, one school two years in a row. So I applied to George Fox. And they have a pretty good PT program, and okay. they were Christians, so I thought that was pretty cool, so yeah. I wanted to go there. Yeah. I applied. I was 34th on the list, and they accepted 30. Oh. So, but praise the Lord, because if I had gotten in, I would not be the person I am today. Yeah. Okay, and we like the person you are today, so that's... I like the person I am today. Do I you? think I have a lot of growth to still do, but I'm really happy with the growth. Yeah. That How old are you right now? Do you mind me asking? Yes. If I had to look at yeah. you right now, I would say that you're 28. Wow. I what like are you? time more. What are you? I'm 31. 31? Yeah. You'll be, you'll be okay. Okay, so, so you were drawn to ministry. Why, though? Like, summarize that. Why? You not, guys not... asked me to stay around. Oh. Okay, so it was a practical consideration. Yeah. But you hate it. You don't like doing it. Oh, no, for sure. I, I love it. Oh, you love it? Yeah. Okay, so well, talk about I that part. because I love people and I love Jesus, talk about and that Jesus part. tells me to love people. Okay, this is what we discovered yesterday as, 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 as James and I were visiting in the mall. Yeah. Uh, we were at the mall. There's a little, what is that? Cafe Aroma? Yeah, Cafe Aroma. I guess yeah. you can go there if you want. It's not that great. So, so um, We didn't get anything. So we, <laughs> we, sat, we sat there in the mall visiting yesterday, and one of the things that we observed, or that I observed and shared with James, that um, I'll be talking about in the message, um, in, a, in another sense, is that one of the things that is present in James is that he loves people. And this is the foundation for ministry, for effective ministry. And I personally have witnessed this over the years, and um, I just want to affirm that in you, that you genuinely, anybody who's interacted with James knows that he's tuned in to the person that he's with in, in the moment and that he actually loves people. And, and so I've witnessed that over the years, and I just want to affirm that. That's kind of you. I would be, I don't know about the generalization of everyone, but that's kind of yeah, you. Yeah, there are some people you don't definitely like. definitely messed Some up. people are annoying, let's just face it. Yeah, <laughs> I okay. I definitely be annoying yeah. and check out. Yeah, well, actually, you're kind of annoying sometimes. <laughs> yeah, as am I. So, you know what I mean? We just need to... We just need to lighten up. Okay, so um, can you share with us any experiences that you've had that you think might be um, like some great, anything that was particularly rewarding or that stands out in your mind? Like, wow, that was, that was just a great experience I had while doing ministry. In the last six, seven years? Yeah, just something that stands out to you that, that you, you... Can I share what I told you yesterday? Sure, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, about my dad. Please, please. I, th I think that would be helpful, actually. Okay. Um, so, 
I was in a discipleship program after a rise with Ty, Yamil, James Raffi, a number of the guys. Yeah. And we had the opportunity to be mentored by each individual um, leader. Ty, I'd have Ty for maybe a month or two, Yamil for a month or two, so and so, or so on. So I've always had some tension uh, with, with my dad. Nothing against my dad. My dad's literally phenomenal. Best dad I could ask for. But we've always had friction. And we see the world in very different ways as I'm Christian and he's, he's not. So I was having like a pity party. I was, I, was, I was playing pity party. And I came to Ty looking for some kind of, you know, I don't know, comfort. encouragement yeah, and that didn't comfort. Work out. No. And I was like, Ty, I'm mad because my dad this and my dad that. And he's like, James, you just need to get over it. Did I have that tone? It was pretty direct. It was direct. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. but hear me. That was what I needed to hear. Yeah. I needed to get over it. But then what Ty said, and hear this out. He said, James, I want you to initiate the love. The love that you wish you were receiving from your dad, Yeah. I want you to initiate and start giving it to him. Yeah, because you were waiting for it, and you were bummed yeah. out because my dad's it not wasn't coming this way. being very deadly. The way that I yeah. wanted it. Yeah, and so you encur- it was encouragement. Yeah, it was to be like James. Yeah, you as the Christian, I want you to step into the, those Christian shoes, and yeah. do the hard thing, and initiate the love, initiate yeah. the contact, yeah. and love him the way that you want to be loved. And that for me is one thing within ministry that's vastly changed my outlook. Is that instead of waiting for people or expecting people to give me what I yeah. want or what I need. That I need to go out and Take the initiative. give yeah. and give yeah. the thing that I so yeah. desire yeah. for myself. Yeah. Thank you. That That's, makes sense. That, oh, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. It's powerful. Yeah. So, so what about what about challenges in ministry? Has it been has it been really easy, or have no. you had what what are like what would be a key challenge in doing well, Bible work ministry, interacting with people? I would say I love people, but also people can be challenging. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, like um, how, how, like be specific, like how and in what ways are people so challenging? I think, I think for me, maybe that's not the best way to, to word it. I think for me, it's just everybody has a very different personality. Yeah. And it's knowing how to, I guess, put your best foot forward, but still, you know, in a healthy way, read a situation. Um, I don't know. I don't really know how to explain it. Well, one time you shared with I, me that sometimes you, you, when you, you try to articulate something, you try to share something, and you know it's the thing that is what they need or it's the answer to their question, but you can sense in the moment that even though that's what they need, they're not grasping it or getting it. So that requires patience in the moment, right? True. And yeah. I think for me too, pride's been an issue for a lot of my life. So mm-hmm. I think oftentimes I also get in my own way and so yeah. that makes it challenging. It's understandable with so, hair like yours. To <laughs> pr- pride is, you're just going to struggle with that. Man. Yeah, you're just going to struggle with that. I have no idea. That. Yeah. So, so uh, can you talk to us about your approach to building relationships oh, man. with people? What, what is your approach? I know you, you involve food a lot. You're like, here, have food. some food. My approach to, okay, so my mind is typically going 100 miles an hour. If you knew me five years ago, I was very like, squirrel. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, like, I'm trying to pay attention, but it's really hard because of what's going on up here. Um, but, see, what was your question? <laughs> My question, James, was uh, what is your approach to building relationships? <clears throat> My approach is being yeah. present, present, listening, don't talk so much. Yeah. And yeah. then try to do things with someone that they're into. Ah. I like, I like hobbies. Like, yeah. some of my best friendships have come from mutual interests. Yeah. Right? So, basketball, disc golf, guitar, like these kind of oh, things. Oh, you're playing right? guitar now. Jesus. Aren't you? Jesus is yeah. like a Talk really about easy guitar one. for a minute. Are you loving that? I love it. Yeah. I'm really grateful to my boy Nate for teaching me yeah. up in the back. Um, yeah, he's been for, teaching you. Okay. Yeah, for Ayla and allowing him space to, yeah, yeah. to, to yeah. share him. Yeah. For Karina and for all her commitment to You're doing pretty good. To helping me out. Yeah. And, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 been two years, almost two years now. Of of my whole life. Are I you believe, taking lessons or you're just yeah. like 
Yeah, okay. so every two weeks I, I have a guy at MIPA, Music Education Performing okay. Arts Association, mm. and I see him, and it's great. I'm, I always believed I couldn't play music or an instrument. I always believed I couldn't sing either. Because people told you that. Because someone told me that. I so think I, I told it. you that once. Oh, for sure. I said, don't sing, James. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. Um, but but that's that's you 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 told me yesterday you're gonna actually uh, take voice lessons yeah too. yeah I, I mean why not why like, not there's so many opportunities I in respect life. your why adventurous spirit I gotta go for it you gotta go I for got it. one life yeah that's right that's right oh, I'm so glad to hear that man so so here's another question that that I'm curious about so here we are we're we're a group of people you know we're a church. Um, have you figured out any ways to be inclusive and to make ministry accessible to other people? So you're not, in other words, you're not just doing ministry with two people, but have you, have you figured out any ways to try to incorporate people into what you're doing so that they can have the joy of also doing ministry? Hmm. That's a hard question. So how do I get people? Are you saying like how do I get people involved in leading others to Jesus? Yeah, that's your or, question. Yeah, or are being we're we're all insecure, and so to come out of our skin to do things that are uncomfortable is kind of challenging. Yeah. So I found personally over the years that one of one of the things that that we're called to do is to make it as easy as possible for people to exercise their gifts, their talents, their abilities. Um, have you found any ways to, to include people in ministry rather than just doing ministry to them? Well, I would say, like, instead of me just kind of calling the shots, it's making teams and yeah. allowing teams to decide, make decisions, yeah. right? So, like, You're good at that. You've done a lot of that. So, for example, we have a young adult core team. Yeah. Core team. It's me, Karina, Adam, and Megan. And instead of me just being like, hey, guys, we're doing this today or tomorrow or next month, like, as a team, we get together. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. What's the plan? Who's doing what? That's good. And then as a team, we work together yeah. to move forward, right? Yeah. Instead of, you know, having just one person kind of call the shots. Yeah, yeah. Good. That's is, excellent. Is that what you would say? Something like that? Or I wouldn't say that. You said that. That's well, what would you, you say? say? whatever you want. I okay. don't know. I, I don't know what. I guess it's my story. I don't know Sorry. what's going on in there. Okay, so. Me neither. So, yeah, so, so just one more thing. Tell us a story. You want to know a story? story? Line. Yeah, this is a storyline. Tell us a story. Tell us a story. It's some ministry story, some, some personal experience, some, some story that, that has, you know, impacted you in doing ministry over the last number of years. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this story. So, I think most of you guys know Daniel Pusick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that guy has done probably the most, some, one of the people that's done some of the most in my life to shape my thinking, mm. besides yourself and Where is he at now, by Light the way? Is team. he still in Portland area? No, I think he's in Coos Bay. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So, anyway... Um, what I appreciate about him is he's really good at noticing when someone's hurting, and then he gives all of himself to that person. Mm. So when I was in a really bad place in life, he dropped all the things he wanted to do yeah. and said, I am going to be fully present right here, right now for this individual. Yeah. And he didn't do it for one day or for two days. He did it for weeks and then months yeah. and then years. And then he started teaching me things about what it would look like to be a Bible worker mm -hmm. or how to navigate I remember that. He was, he, was, he was mentoring you through a lot oh, of that. Oh, very yeah. much so. Yeah. Very much so. And, I, and oftentimes, I know he's been gone for a few years now, a couple, two, three years, but I still hear him in my head. Mm. And I think one thing I've learned is oftentimes I don't appreciate the people that are currently in my life until they're gone. And I think when he was here, I, I kind of felt more like he's nagging on me. Like, oh, man, he keeps telling me to do this or to do that. Yeah. But now that he's gone, I'm like, everything he said was in love. Kind of mm -hmm. like what I said earlier, the story with you when, you, when you were like, just get over it. You yeah. know, I'm over here, like, about to cry, and I want some, some hugs by Ty. 
But um, what I needed, uh, what I, just, I, I was having a bad day or what, something. But what but, I needed, yeah, what I needed was to be told the truth in love. Yeah, yeah. You know, because nothing about what you said was hurtful. Yeah. It was what was needed. No, yeah. Nothing like my goal back, in that was to get you to take the in, initiative, take the initiative with your dad. Yeah. Exactly. Because he wasn't going to cross and the, that's what the happened. barrier. Yeah. And that's what happened. And, yeah. and I feel like because of that, too, like my dad and I are beginning to have a healthier relationship. He's still trying to learn how to communicate his emotions. I'm still learning how to communicate my emotions. But we're moving forward. Praise God. That's you know? encouraging. So I don't know if that's really a story, but yeah. I just appreciate when people take the time to lean into me yeah. um, and say not only the, the soft and easy things, but say the, the hard, difficult things. Yeah. Well, the Bible says, uh, you know, deceitful are the kisses of an enemy, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. Where's that found? In the book of Proverbs somewhere. If you read the whole book, you'll find it. It's in there. <laughs> I've never read the book of Proverbs. You've never read the book of Proverbs? I've never read the book of <laughs> Psalms either. Okay. I'm hardly a Bible worker. You're a very good Bible worker, and we love you, James. Thank you for all the service you've rendered over the years and for loving well, people, caring about people. If it wasn't for people like you, I wouldn't be here. Well, it's good to be here with you. So I appreciate it. We're you. very happy. Um, let's affirm James with our hands.